Turn and say, that's me. Turn and say, that's you. It's you. It's you. All right. Father God, we thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for you are so good to us, Lord. We thank you for your blessing. We thank you for everything you're doing in our lives, Lord. Touch us and use us, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So just a little review of what we kind of talked about uh, last week in Romans chapter 13. We spoke about authority and how we're to submit to authority. We talked about how it's supposed to be uh, when, it re when it referenced to religious authority. Um, in the first point, God has given us people to help watch, pray, and instruct us in the way of righteousness. Amen. God has done that in our life. He's put people in our life to help us, to guide us, to lead us. Um, we're also called to honor them and not fear them. For they're, they're to be a, we are there to be a blessing. We're to be a blessing to them as they are a blessing to us. How many know that I should not be, you guys should not be afraid to come and talk to me? Amen. You should not be afraid to talk to me. Um, I shared a story. My, my uh, daughter, Abigail, um, sometimes when my kids want to ask me something, they go, they go ask their mom first to test the waters, to think, what does their dad think, you know? So Abigail wanted to go on a trip just recently. She wants to go on her in a, in a uh, high school trip in, like, G February, so she called, talked to Suzanne, and she's like, hey, mom, what do you think dad's going to say? That's how they start it. And then she tells her the story, right? I want to go on the trip. I'll pay my way. I'll work. And I'll, I'll earn money. And, all, and she's telling her this whole thing. So my wife tests the water, and she says, hey, I just want you to know that Abigail's going to ask you something, and this is what she wants. And, and she's, you know, again, testing the water. What do you think? And I said to her, I said to her, I, I don't know, you know, I, I, I'll see, I'll think about it. So I get into the house and Abigail, <laughs> Abigail comes into the kitchen. She's got this, this dry erase board in her hand. It's her presentation. And she walks in and she goes, um, <clears throat> uh, she goes, uh, dad, and I, and I, obviously I, I took off with this. I said, what do you want? And she's like, uh. Uh, no, forget it. Forget. It. What do you want, Abigail? Tell me now. She's like, no, no, I'll come later when you're in a better mood. Abigail, it's gonna be. You better tell me now, or it's a no. She's like, oh, oh, oh okay. Uh, uh. <laughs> so she's she she starts all uh, fidgeting. Um, uh, okay. And then Rachel's there telling her, just tell him, just tell him. You know. I'm telling you, man, these guys have, like, attorneys and stuff like that. There, Just tell him. And, and I'm laughing because I'm deep inside, but I'm trying to keep a straight face. Like, what is it? What is this? So she's telling me, like, I'm the first time I'm hearing this. She goes, I want to go on a, on, a, on a school trip. I go, what school trip? What is this school trip? You know? So I'm playing with this, and she's going and she's telling me the presentation. She's going through the presentation, and I was pretty impressed. I was very impressed. She had the pros and the cons and, and all this stuff. And, and I was pretty impressed. And um, I said, oh, well, you know what? I like your presentation. But, you know, kid, we sh kids get kind of like, eh, let's go to dad and speak to him. How many of us went to our moms when we wanted something more than we went to our dads? You know, it was depending on who you are To me, I would fear, I would, when it comes to our house, I would fear Suzanne more than they fear me. Uh, uh, right, honey? I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, she don't wear red on accident. <laughs> it means fire. So um, we're not to be afraid of them. They're to be a blessing to us. You know, when, when I call you and I say, hey, uh, uh, Mary, I need to talk to you after service. Mary should be like, oh, crack, what did I do? You know what I mean? Uh, Jillian, we need to talk. <laughs> oh, you know, no, you're supposed to be like, Oh, yeah, okay, what is it? You know what I mean? There should, be a, there should be a spirit of, I'm not afraid to have a conversation. But if you're doing bad, right? God commands and not suggests us to love one another, right? He says, I command you. This is a commandment. How many know there's a difference between a commandment and a suggestion? Right? Big difference. All right? He doesn't suggest it, you know? 
Oh, is it distracting? Sorry, I thought it was in style. So, <laughs> I know, thank you, honey. God commands us, not suggests us to love. And some people take this as a suggestion. I suggest you love one another. No, I command you to love one another. Why does God command and not suggest? Because there are some people you don't want to love. And when you're like, oh, I got to love them. You know, I talked about having to love my kids. I got to love them. You know, you got to love my kids. So we're commanded to love our kids. We're commanded to love one another. We're commanded. We're also told to cast off or put away the works of our old life and then put on or shrink into Christ. We talked about how we're talking about shrink wrap, like shrink wrap Christ. Christ should be so close to your heart, your life, everything about you. Amen? And to walk in a new way of life. Now, as we get into this new chapter, we're going to learn about, about uh, Christian living the motives behind the things we do, and the caution in doing them. Now, I want to give you kind of a little forewarning. I'm going to be talking a little bit about food, so take it easy, guys. I know we're at lunchtime here coming up. Don't want you guys to get so distracted that you start thinking about your food now, right? But I hope this blesses you, but we're going to, again, talk a, bit, a little bit about Christian living. Romans 14. Romans 14. Who took the wheel up there? All right. Let me see which kid is not here. Oh, is it? I knew it. Newman. I <laughs> like Seinfeld. I watch Seinfeld. Newman. Poor girl. All right. Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to dispute over doubtful things. For one believes he may eat all things, but he who, eat, who is weak eats only vegetables i told you jennifer. <laughs> jennifer i told jennifer this morning i said how are you feeling jennifer's like man i think i ate too many vegetables and really upset my stomach and i go i got a sermon for you this morning <laughs> the holy spirit who eats only vegetables let not him who eats despise him who does not eat and let not him who does not eat judge him who eats. For God has received him. Who are you to judge another servant? To his own master he stands or falls. Indeed, he will be made to stand. For God is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day above the other. Another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord. And he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord, for he gives God thanks. And he who does not eat to the Lord, he does not eat and give God, gives God thanks. Amen? So there are things in the Christian faith that are not so declarative or evident. Amen? There's not, there are things that are not so black and white. Right? They're not so black and white. There are things that are in the gray area-ish. Like, for example, how we worship. Some people stand. Some people sit. Some people have their hands raised. Some people don't have their hands raised. Some people, you know, sing, sing like this, you know, and some people don't. Some people, you know, and those are not, there's nowhere in the Bible says, when you shall worship, you shall stand with your hand raised up. You know, there's none of that. So those are gray areas. So different people worship different ways. People pray different ways. But one thing is said about prayer and worship is when we do pray and when we do worship, we're to do it from our heart. Okay, that's a given. That's a given. So in the gray areas, we don't look. So in those gray areas, Christians must learn to get along with people. In other words, chill out. Stop being so uptight about things that are not so, so what do you call, black and whitish. Amen? Good being, you know, relax on your, on your faith when it comes down to those things. Two examples are given. Those who eat certain foods versus those who do not. Amen? Those who eat certain foods versus those who do not. There are people who like, in, in that time, he says, look, there are some people who eat 
certain foods and you don't. Don't look at them and go, how dare you not eat or eat that? Or how dare you not eat that? Okay? I have friends who, when we go fishing, they bring uh, uh, pork skins. You know, the dried up pork skin? What is, I don't know what they're called. Pork rinds. Pork rinds. And they're like, hey, you want some pork rinds? You mean pork skins? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, no thanks. All right? And sometimes, you know, I don't look at them and go, how dare you eat that? wicked sinner, you know. They can eat it. If they eat it, they eat it. If they don't eat it, they don't eat it. I don't, I eat, I mean, I don't eat pork, but I do eat bacon, so I guess I do eat pork. <laughs> Same thing, right? But that's in my own heart. Bacon is burnt up pork. It doesn't mean it's pork. I know I do have to, if I eat pork, it's got to be so burnt that I can't even tell it's pork anymore. <laughs> I got to like, let's just burn the thing. Yesterday I was cooking fish. We went fishing and we caught a, a big catfish and a striper bass and everything. So yesterday I went in and I put it on the I put it in aluminum foil, you know, seasoned it. And I put it on the on the grill and I came back about an hour later and I pulled it out and and opened it up and started. I'm like, no, it still tastes like fish. And I put it back into the put it <laughs> put it back in the bar in the grill. Yeah, it tasted like lake, but it would still taste like fish. I was like, this still tastes like lake. This tastes and I threw it back in there and I turned that grill full blast. That the the aluminum foil became b- black. It was like char like burned up. And then I took it out. I'm like, okay, that tastes better. And then we doused it with lemon juice and tartar sauce to make sure fish don't taste like fish. People have their own way of doing things that are gray and you don't know. To you, it's, it's not right. To them, it's okay. You don't know. I'm standing here worshiping God. Ah, I don't look going. Look, person next to me who's just going, hallelujah. Oh, they don't know Jesus like I know Jesus. If they know Jesus like I know Jesus, they would be hands up in the air praising God with pom-poms and all that. You don't know. Amen? There are those who, who observe certain days versus those who don't. Right? There are those who say, I worship the Lord on Sunday. I love God. I worship him. And then you got the freaks. Oh, I worship God every day. You can slow down there, hot rod. You're still alive. You're not in heaven yet. Easy. You know what I mean? Every day is God's day. You know? Listen, I get it. Every day to you is God's day. There's nothing wrong. Every day to me, I love the Lord and serve the Lord. It's not like I wake up Sunday morning and go, I think I'm going to love Jesus today. I think it's Jesus' day today. You know? And while the other day, I worship Satan. Give me a break. It's not how it works. We all have our days. We we all give our the Lord dedication and we serve God and there's people who worship God and, and do as you do. And there's some people who don't. I go to service all my entire life, ever since I was a believer in Christ, I went to church every time church was open. But that's me. That may not be you because you're not as righteous as me. <laughs> That may not be you. That may not be. I'm just kidding about the rights part. Slow down there, guys. Amen? That may not be you. To me, and if I miss, if I miss, I felt like, I felt convicted. Like I was like missing something. There was just something missing there. But that's my heart. That's me. It does, I don't look at, oh my gosh, you, oh, I, I see you here Sunday, only Christian. You know? We don't know what other people do during the week. Maybe they're laboring, they're served, they're, man, they got to wake up in the morning and they're running businesses or doing something. We don't know. So we don't judge another person based on those things. We don't know. All we can do is say, hey, praise God, serve the Lord every day. Amen? Whether a person eats or does not eat or a person celebrates or does not celebrate, that is between them and God in their own conscience. I've known Christians in Harvest who don't celebrate Christmas. Yeah, we don't want to celebrate Christmas. I mean, we sell, it's not like they don't believe in the birth of Christ, but they don't celebrate Christmas in the sense of, I don't look at them and go, you poor, pathetic person. 
How dare you not celebrate Christmas? Don't you believe there's a Jesus? You know, that type of thing. Do you celebrate your birthday? And they're not saying that, no, I don't celebrate Christmas. They're saying, yeah, I celebrate the birth of Christ, but I don't celebrate the way you celebrate with presents and all that stuff. Okay, praise God. There's nothing wrong with that. Just give me your gift. You don't get one. <laughs> I'll give you a moment to think about that, Josh. Give me the present. The point is, just because they don't do it the way you do it doesn't make, make them less of you, to you, okay, or less to God, or makes you more righteous, amen? There might be things that they do. I pray every morning. I get up. I pray every morning. I read my Bible every morning. I don't look at you people and go, you pathetic. For how long did you pray? Two minutes? <laughs> I beat you by three. You know what I mean? We don't do that. Don't judge. That's between them and God and their own consciousness. Let their own conscience. They decide. They will know. And folks, I'm talking about gray areas, okay? Remember that. Let's read on. He says, for none of us lives and dies to himself. Verse 7. None of us lives and dies to himself. And no one dies to himself. For if we live, we live to the... And if we die, we die to the, therefore, whether we live or die, we are the, we belong to the Lord, right? Our lives belong to God, and each one of us are to live to the Lord the best we can, honoring him in our lives and in our death. We belong to God. We belong to God. Amen. We don't know, again, we don't know what's in the hearts of people, but we all must live to God. Hallelujah. All right, verse 9. For to this end, Christ died and rose and lived again, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. But why do you judge your brother? Or why do you show contempt for your brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, for it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, turn to neighbor and say, so then. That's right. Each of us shall give account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not judge one another anymore, but rather resolve this, not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall in our brother's way. Amen. Again, what is he talking about? Doubtful things. Why are you judging? You don't know. Christ died for the weak and the strong. All level of Christian maturities. Listen, you may not be a super Christian if there is one. You may not feel like a super Christian. You may be a person who, man, you're like, ah, oh, I keep stumbling every every day, man. I keep I keep I, I, I say, God, I'm not going to cuss again. I promise you, and I will not. I swear, beep, beep, beep. And here you are. Oh, I already broke my promise. Darn it, from now on, beep, I'm up. <laughs> Deacon Gary was telling me, uh, uh, he was sharing a story. He's like, yeah, I went to this brother's house. I'm talking to him, and he starts cussing. And he goes, oh, every time he cuss, he'd be like, hey, uh, oh, man, I'm sorry. And then he'd come, keep talking. He'd keep, and then he'd come, oh, man, I'm sorry, man. I, I, got, I got a potty mouth there. And then he kept, and Deacon Gary got so upset. He looked at him and says, you know what? You are who you are. You are who you are. All right? That's it. Oh, what am I going to I'm going to sit there and get an apology every, like, two minutes on that. Even for weak ones. Christ died for them. There are people who, who need to hang on to the altar of God. And God says, here, as long as they're holding on, amen? Judging a brother on trivial issues is wrong and causes nothing but discord and discouragement. You don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Some people walk in through the doors. They come in. They may walk through that door and they may not be dressed the best. I don't judge that because I don't know. Them has been woken up one morning and said, oh, you know what? And God says, go to church. 
you know what, Lord, I'm going to go to church. I'm going to go. And then you're like, oh, you know what, I have nothing to wear. I have nothing. I have no, no uh, this or that. You don't know what happened the day before. Maybe someone got hurt. Maybe they're in the hospital. You don't know that they grab whatever clothes they put and they put on and they come in here. God forbid that anyone walk through this door and get judged by what they're wearing because you don't know because they had a choice. They can say, you know what? I'm not going to go because I don't have the right clothes or you know what? I'll just put on whatever I have here and I'm, I'll go. Praise God they're here. Praise God they're here. So we don't look at people and judge. We don't know their heart, but God knows their heart. God knows what they've been through. You know, we sit there and we worship God. We, oh, hallelujah. But maybe they had a horrible week. Maybe their week was so bad someone died or, or maybe they lost their job or maybe they know, oh, man, I got all these burdens on me. And they're trying their best. At least they're here. God forbid Christians sit there and judge one another and go, I can't believe you're not worshiping God. You should be happy. You don't know. All we can do is worship God and pray God, touch their hearts or whatever they're going through, whatever, whatever they're dealing with, Lord. This is really what the crux of this message is. It's the whole point of this is, is understanding to live with people who may have different views or may be going through different things that you may be going through. We're tired of stuck-up believers. We don't need to oh, I'm the Howard the Third of, uh, of Christianity. And, you know, we can't have that because we don't know. We don't know. Praise God. I can't believe they went to the restroom. That's their fourth time. Well, they had a choice. They can, they can stay home or they say, you know what? I'm going to go and pray for God's healing and, and, and may, maybe God heals me in this time and, and I'm going to still worship God. You don't know. Amen? You don't know. Well, somebody's like, I was just about to get up to the restroom. If I get up right now, they're going to think it's me. <laughs> Don't you hate when that happens? Huh? <laughs> Judging a brother discourages them. It discords them. I can't believe you went to church like that. That discourages people like that. You know what I mean? And they don't want to, you're going to make them to the, they don't want to come. They're like, you know what? I'm not going to go there. Or I'm not going to go. Maybe they're just, I don't want to go. But they looked at me wrong. You don't want that to happen. Amen? Each of us will stand before God and be judged and each must give an account or reason for our actions. You all know why you do what you do on those gray areas and those things. Each and every one of you has your own, you know, you know, and you'll stand before God. Amen? Verse 14, he says, I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. Yeah, keep going, there you go. I know and am convinced by the Lord Jesus that there is nothing unclean of itself. But to him who considers anything to be unclean, to him it is unclean. Yet if your brother is grieved because of your food, you are no longer walking in love. Do not destroy your brother. Do not destroy with your food the one for whom Christ died. Therefore, do not let your good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and approved by men. Amen? My conscience, my conscience may allow me to do something that your conscience is against. Amen? It may be for me, I'm not convicted, but to you, your conscience says no. If the Lord is convicting me, okay, or is not convicting me, but is convicting you, then you should not do it. Just because I do it, I'm fine with it, doesn't mean that you should do it and be fine with it. Because if the Lord says no, no to you, it's no to you. And remember, I'm talking about doubtful things. I'm not talking about, hey, let's go rob a bank. And you're like, no, man, no, hey, that, that's wrong. It's, my heart's convicting. Well, it's not convicting me. I guess it's all right. If 
folks, that's not a gray area. All right? Let's do, there are things that are very, let's go do drugs. Oh, uh, it's, my heart's not convicting me. Well, it's convicting me. That's not a gray area, folks. There are things that are grayish, and there are things that are black and white. He is talking about doubtful things here. Doubtful. You're not sure. You're not, you know, there's just certain things. Now, we, need to, we can look at the bigger picture and go, you know what? Certain things that people do that they're not feeling convicted about. I'm not going to get I'm not going to get too much into detail but you know for example let's say I eat a ham sandwich and you don't eat a ham sandwich it says don't let your food or what you think it's okay for you to do cause you to stumble because you may think I'm not going to I can't eat a ham sandwich I can't do it the Lord will you know and maybe that's your heart I can't eat a ham sandwich I'm just giving an example but if it is okay for me to eat a ham sandwich, I'm not going to grab my ham sandwich and go, how you doing, man? Want a bite? Right? I'm not going to flaunt it in your face. Eat a ham sandwich. Because you don't know what it may be okay for you may not be okay for the others. So you don't want what is good. It's the Bible says, do not let your good be spoken evil of. Hey, I may walk in your house and you're listening to Michael Jackson. And you're all, oh, and all that. Woo, ow, would walk. Well, you're right. Sally, I'm going to charge you for that. You're moonwalking and do all, and I walk in your house and I'm like, Michael Jackson is offensive to me. And you walk in, oh, oh. you shouldn't be like, oh, ooh, come on, dance with me, bro. Ooh, yeah. Ooh. Right? No. You should be careful because it may be okay for you to listen to Michael Jackson. It may be okay to you for you to listen to the Beatles or Doobie Brothers or whatever you guys listen to. But, it may, but to them, it's not okay for them. They may walk in there and be like offended, like, oh. Because there's nothing in the Bible that says, thou shalt not listen to oldies. There isn't. But how do I know that if oldies to one person doesn't bring memories back? How many know music is powerful? You know? Music is powerful. When I, I can feel the spirit of music. When I, when I listen to songs, like songs come up even when they're in distance or whatever, you know, I know it. I'm like, oh, man. And that, there's a spirit that just rises with music. You know, and I'm like, oh, I'm like, you're dead, dude. You're dead. You're staying dead. Some of you know the tune. You're dead. Because that stuff wants to do what? Resurrect that. So you got to be very careful. You don't want what is okay. And you know what? It may be okay for you. But it may not be okay for your kids. It may not be okay for them. Amen? We need to be very, very careful. We don't make them stumble. Don't let what is good for you, and you think it's okay for me, you're much, you may be much older and much more wiser and much more mature than they are. But that right there stumbles them. Amen? Therefore, verse 19, therefore, let us pursue the things which make for peace and the things by which one may edify another. Do not destroy the work of God for the sake of food or music or hobbies. I fill in the blank. All things indeed are pure, but it is evil for the man who eats with offense or cause, one who causes one. It is good it is good neither to eat meat, nor drink wine, nor do anything by which your brother stumbles or is offended or is made weak. Do you have faith? Have it to yourself before God. And what the Apostle Paul is saying, look, are you strong? You have faith? Okay, that's you, between you and God on these things. Happy is he who does not condemn himself 
in what he approves. But he who doubts or causes offense is condemned if he eats because he does not eat from faith for whatever is not from faith is sin. We are called to have peace and edification foremost in our minds towards one another. That should be the key of everything. It's not about you. It's not about you. It's about Christ and the, one, the people around you. The people around you. Is it okay to eat certain foods? For, sure it is. It's not offensive these days. It, well, is, it okay, is it okay to drink alcohol? Again, the question is, what is it doing for you and who's around you? And what kind of witness does it give? Listen, there are alcoholics in this world. But not every person is an alcoholic, right? But we don't know who is and who is not, right? We don't know. We don't say, hey, before you open my refrigerator, can you fill out this survey? You know? We don't do that because you don't know what is okay for one person is fine for them, but for another person, it may cause a, a snowball effect and destroy their whole life. You don't know. There's times, there's witnesses. I mean, people know what is good for one person, it's not good for another. Amen? Brandon, I remember when Brandon broke his ankle. Brandon, a long time ago, if you don't mind a little bit of your testimony. Brandon, a long time ago, was, was uh, uh, looking at the world and looking at people and, and hooked on all kinds of pills and pain pills and everything. I remember when he broke his ankle. And they had him in the, on that bed. And they're like, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to give you uh, um, some pain medicine to numb you so we can set your ankle back in order. It hurts. He's like, it's going to hurt. And Brandon's sitting there going, no, just do it. I don't need pain medication. Don't give me none of that. He didn't want any of it. He didn't want because he knew that could cause a person to stumble. It may even cause him to stumble to a point where he's not able to recover. I told the story before. I mean, I'm his pastor, and I was telling him, bro, take it. Take it. Take the drugs. Take the drugs, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> you just said don't. <laughs> but you don't know. So, so he knows that he doesn't want to open that door. You don't want to open that door, so he does not want, he, oh, I'm going to keep that shut. Amen? It is better not to eat than cause offense. I mean, why? I'm going to sit there and eat, make you stumble. Don't do it. It's better. Even if you're like, I have the right to. All right, keep that between you and God. But you know what? Don't bring it out here and, and, and flaunt it in front of people. You don't know. We condemn ourselves if we choose to do something knowing it may cause others to stumble. Hey, it may be good for me, but you know what? If it made someone else stumble, guess what? That which is good to me has now become evil to me because you, I used it. You know what Jesus says? It is better for you to tie a millstone around your neck and throw yourself on the other side into the lake, into the lake, than to cause one to stumble. Really is. And folks, think about it. It's food, drink, everything. How, even how we dress. How, what can cause people to stumble. How we look, what we do. We need to remember. Yeah, please, thank you. I was just talking about you. I didn't want to like stare at you, give and make it obvious, but okay. But you know, how, what we do, and, and we need to think, that it, oh yeah you look great on that but uh, a little bit too much you may cause other people to stumble is that what you want to do you know now don't get all self conscious on me folks what I'm saying is we need to be very very careful to remember that everything that we do we don't do it just for us but we do it for people around us what we drink what we eat how we act what you know all those things now at the same time I'm not there's two ways of looking at this Let's not walk on eggshells. Amen? 
We're not going to sit here and walk on eggshells because the Apostle Paul hits two people. Two, two people he's talking about. One, the person who does it, be careful. You don't cause people to stumble. And then he's talking on the other side. Hey, be careful that you don't judge the other person. Okay? It's both sides. Don't be like, I can't believe. You know you made me stumble. You know, another person like, you know, don't cause another person to stumble. Be very careful. It's a very great balance in everything that we do. We just do it like, okay, we're going to pursue righteousness, peace, and, and joy, and, and, and remember to relax, and, and don't walk around judgmental, don't walk around pointing, don't walk around judging others. Amen? Because you don't know. You don't know. In conclusion, summary. In summary, what did we learn? Christians sometimes don't look at the same thing the same way. Amen? They don't. Christians don't look at the same thing the same way. Yeah, I learned that even among my kids. I see one thing one way, they see something the other. I try to tell my kids to dress conservatively, to be careful what they say, what they listen to. You know, all these things. Why? Because I see one thing one way, the other one, they're just like, what are you talking about, Dad? You're so old. I know, right? They, we look different things, same, diff, same, same thing, but we don't always look at them at the same way. Amen? It may be permissible for someone to do something whilst impermissible for another. Just as it's okay for me, it does not make it okay for them. Or it's okay for them, it doesn't make it okay for me. Amen? I skateboard. I skateboard around my house. I skateboard outside. I skateboard ramps. It's okay for me to skateboard. It's not okay for Brandon to skateboard. Brandon should not touch a skateboard. Okay? I skate. Brandon doesn't skate. Brandon can't go, hey, I think it's okay for me to skateboard. I'll tell Brandon no. And just because I skateboard, it's not okay for me to tell Brandon, hey, Brandon, you should skateboard. Lesson learned. Lesson learned. <laughs> because if you put Brandon, who doesn't know how to skateboard, on your skateboard, then Brandon breaks his ankle. And you got problems. So don't try to put other people in your shoes. Amen? Don't try to force them. And don't think because you're not in their shoes that you want to be in their shoes because you don't know. Amen? I'm, I am to be very careful that whatever I do does not cause other people to stumble. Amen? What I do is cause other people to stumble. I mean to be very careful. Amen? On that. Let's Fatima. We talked about Fatima and her retreat. I went on a zip line. Woo! Fatima's like, nah, I'm not going to go. I'm telling Fatima as I'm, I'm putting on the harness. Fatima, you got to go. Fatima, got to go. I know. Like in, in like two weeks, I've learned this lesson. <laughs> Fatima, Brandon just broke his ankle two weeks ago because I'm telling him, bro, you can go down this ramp. It's going to be okay. I'll catch you. And he broke his ankle. And here I am at the retreat. Telling Fatima, Fatima, you got to go down the zip line. You're going to be fine. You got to do it. So Fatima puts on the harness and she's doing great. Until she got to the end where you got to stop on a 45 degree ramp. And you see her, she's, her body's twisting. And I could see myself going, oh. and you're just boop, boop, boop. And then I'm like, she, she stopped. She kind of gave us a little, oh, okay. yeah. I'm good. And I was like, darn it. Suzanne's like, that's two people. Yeah. Two people. I'm like, that's it. I'm not telling anyone to do anything. <laughs> hey, Amen. I feel so bad. Kept checking on her. You okay? And then I was a designated wheelchair pusher for Brandon. Not because I loved him, but because I felt obligated. I was obligated, right? He kept looking up here and was like, you did this to me. 
You did this to me. <laughs> I felt so bad. I Brandon, that zip line, you should try it, Brandon. It was so great. Should, I think we could do something about that ankle. Just kind of leaf it up as you're going down the zip line. <laughs> I know. Thank you. He's like, you should. He told me the other day, he's like, are we going to go to that retreat? Because I got to try that zip line. I'm like, you can do whatever you want. I'm not telling you to do nothing. The other day I was telling someone to do something. And I was like, you know what? I retract. Take my words back. You do whatever you want to do. We are, not <laughs> we are not to be judgmental of each other in trivial matters. We all live and die to the Lord and belong to him and must give account to the Lord ourselves. Amen? Everything we do, how we live, we give account. So, folks, when you live your life, whatever you decide to do or not to do, keep it a good heart. Keep it a right heart with the Lord. Don't be... Don't do it because other people are doing it, and don't not do it because other people are not doing it. On the gray matters, be very careful. Now, remember, I'm talking about gray matters here. I'm not talking about black and white. There are black and white things. There are things that are very specific. If the Lord says, do not steal, and you're stealing, and you're looking at me going, well, don't judge me. I'm not convicted. I'm saying that you got a problem because that's a black and white thing. It is not a gray area. Amen? But at the same time, let's have a spirit of love. We have one obligation, as the Lord says, to do what? Love one another. To remember to live with one another, to be kind to one another. Each and every one of us here have different ways of seeing things, different ways. We don't know what you've gone through, but may God give you the strength that he needs to give you. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your blessing. We thank you, God, for your grace, your mercy, your peace. We ask you, Father God, that you will lead us, guide us, and strengthen us, Lord. Father God, as we pray, Father God, we also pray, uh, Lord, that you will guide us in uh, getting the air conditioning fixed, Lord, that you put the right people in our lives, Lord, to, to deal with that, Father God. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for every man, woman, and child here, Lord God, and that you will use them, Father God, in a mighty way, Lord. We love you. Help us to love one another, Lord. Help us to to take our liberties and use them for you, to glorify you and not to cause any stumbling, Lord. Father God, let us look at the, both the strong and the weak and not judge them, Father God, but to love them and to remember, Lord, that we are all at different levels, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, and all the saints of God say, amen. Will you please rise so we get dismissed? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You guys are troopers. Thank you guys so much for bearing with this, this uh, thing. Like I said, you got two for, two for one exercise and all that. Uh, I don't even know how they were dancing up here. They were dancing. By the way, Ren, I'm sorry for you seeing that, you being a professional dancer and seeing what was going on up here. I'm sure you were probably praying hard. I was too, saying, please stop. Uh, but uh, praise God, it's good to dance for the Lord and, and give him the glory, the honor, and the honor. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We thank you. Saints of God, remember the Lord. Seek his face. Remember, he loves you. He loves you. Calls you and loves. Love one another as Christ has loved us. Saints of God, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his face shine upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. Christ be with you.